I am Dr. Krishna Agarwal. I am a gynecologist. I have got 40 years experience and I am practicing in Gurgaon. Today I am going to speak about a common woman problem that is menorrhagia. Menorrhagia means excessive blood flow during menstruation. Normally blood, blood should flow around 4 to 5 days every 30 days. And out of those four days, two days are moderately heavy, while the other two or three days should not be very heavy, it should be in light. Less amount of blood should be. If the blood flow is more than this four or five days, or all four days it is very heavy, or it's with a lot of blood clots, or it is lasting for about six days, seven days, ten days, anything, it is called menorrhagia. Now, this menorrhagia can be due to two types, like one where the cycle is of 30 days, that is you are getting the menstruation after every 28 or 30 days, but the length of bleeding is more, about more than 5 days, about 6, 7, 8, whatever, it's long. And the second type is where the cycle is shortened, that is you are bleeding in less than 25 days. every less than 25 days, it could be 20 days, sometimes even 15 days also. If you are having that kind of bleeding, this also comes under menorrhagia. Now, this menorrhagia is a very important cause because it is having lot of bad effect on the person's he health. The causes of these, this menorrhagia in the puberty, in the young girls is and ovulation because when they start menstruation, they, they is not perfect. Their uh, pituitary ovarian axis is not perfect. The, all they are not properly coordinated and the uh, hormones are not adequate either from pituitary or the responsive ovary. So the 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 girl has only estrogen ovulation doesn't occur and progesterone is not there. This kind of excessively estrogenic cycle has excessive bleeding, but this should not last for more than 2-3 years at the time of puberty. So the next important cause is deficiency state, especially calcium and vitamin C. The calcium, most of the calcium we are getting from milk and Earlier days we used to, everybody used to drink a lot of milk, all the children were giving milk, but nowadays this, this is not a fashion, this is not in fashion, people don't like it, it's a fad and also the quality of milk is not good. Also people are living indoors, especially in summer because of the long office hours from morning till late evening and they are not getting exposed to sunlight causing a vitamin D deficiency. This vitamin D deficiency in turn causes calcium deficiency because calcium is not absorbed from the diet we take. The next uh, calcium is necessary for integrity of vasculature for coagulation of blood and uterine contraction and because if it is less all these three things will be affected and will result into excessive bleeding from anywhere it could be any other place not only the uterus but any other place then next is uh, vitamin c also is equally important it is important for integrity of the small capillaries in vitamin deficiency state, C deficiency state, the scurvy is known to occur, but in a milder form, it can be just causing the thinned out capillaries, which cause uh, repeated ruptures and result in menorrhagia during menses. Then the fibroid and polyp of the uterus also cause menorrhagia, and in a persistent menorrhagic case, both should be excluded by way of ultrasound or hysteroscopy. Now, the infection is another common cause of menorrhagia because it causes widespread inflammation. So, the 
blood flow to the pelvis is increased also at the same time because of inflammation the vessels are also not so healthy both resulting into heavy menstruation <laughs> nowadays ever since the advent of medical pill for abortion has come up uh, as incomplete abortion has become another cause of menorrhagia because small amount is left off any reproductive products are left into the uterus and they keep causing bleeding it could be a irregular bleeding or it could be due to it could be a menorrhagia at the time of menstruation only the copper tea a left copper tea or a forgotten copper tea inside the uterus or even some people are they react to presence of copper tea by excessive bleeding that's also another cause if which should be looked after blood dyscrasia they would come last because it's not so common in our country to have hemophilia or other causes but if all other causes are ruled out then blood dyscrasia should be seen like thrombocytopenia or deficiency state of blood coagulation factors now effect of this heavy menstruation is very important because it should not be taken lightly because it is causing loss of blood it it is our body which is losing blood and loss of blood at every month makes lot of difference to the body and here the loss is the blood loss means it is we are losing protein we are losing iron and we are losing all other components like calcium magnesium phosphorus all the vitamins etc so it should not be taken very lightly and it should be treated in time so that the body health doesn't deteriorate too much this will co- also cause infertility because with so much of bleeding occurring the conceptus even if it occurs the conception occurs it doesn't get implanted properly inside the uterus and before we can detect pregnancy it can get excluded extruded from the uterus now heavy menstruation will also cause endometriosis because so much of blood when it when uterus contracts the some of the blood gets regurgitated through the tube and it goes into the pelvis both causing ectopic endometrium and resulting in endometriosis this retrograde menstruation is important cause of endometriosis and that is because of this many other complication occur so heavy menstruation should be checked in time then we all know heavy menstruation causes dysmenorrhea that is excessive pain during menstruation because the blood uh, uterus has to work harder to extrude this blood out of the uterus prolonged bleeding will also result into infection and adhesion formations into the uterus because this act as a foreign body the blood and which initiates inflammation and adhesion formation into the uterus therefore menorrhagia should not be taken out lightly it should be taken care of in time so that the girl remains healthy all her life thank you